Why I suck at Final Cut Pro? Who are you to say I suck? How dare you, Dylan? Yes, that title is a bit rough around the edges, but I honestly think that by knowing and using what we're gonna learn in this video, you will edit videos faster, more efficiently, and with less headache. I'm Dylan John, and let's cut out the fluff and jump into it. So what do you do when you want to move a clip, but there's a bunch of things attached to it, and you try and move it, it moves, but it also moves everything with it. This is annoying, I know. So let me show you how to become a better FCP editor. Let's first say that you don't even want this clip anymore. You don't want to move it to another spot. This is a simpler solution. You just hold shift and hit delete. This is gonna create a gap clip right where that clip is and keep everything attached. And then it's as simple as if you wanted to find a new clip, let's say you wanted to add this, you would drag it to the gap clip and then you would hit replace from start. That's gonna replace that gap clip with the clip that you selected. But what if you want everything to snap together? So you want all these clips to basically suck into where this transition is, but you wanna keep all of this attached media attached. What you can do is use an incredibly powerful key that we're gonna go over all the uses for, and it's the Grav key, also known as the tilde key. If you don't see this on your keyboard, it's because likely you don't have an American keyboard. However, at the end of this section, I will show you how to set this function up, so don't stress too much about it. So what you would just do is you would press that Grav key and then hit delete. Notice how everything sucks into that transition and we still have this attached media attached to exactly where it was on the timeline. So that looked like this if I go back and forth. So pretend we don't want this clip anymore. We can't just delete it because then it's gonna delete anything that's attached. So we hit that Grav key, hit delete, everything sucks in and we keep those clips underneath. Another instance where the Grav key is so useful is when you want to use your trim tool, but there's stuff attached to your clip. So if you didn't already know, you can press T to bring up your trim tool. And if you scroll your clip to the left or right, you can change what media is shown in your clip on the timeline. But as you've noticed, this then moves anything that's attached to that clip with that movement. So this is where the Grav key can come in handy again, because if we press the Grav key with the trim tool up and we scroll to the left or right, you'll notice we're changing what media is shown in the clip, but all this attached media is not moving with it. So very useful for that instance as well. Another example of when the Grav key is useful is when you need to move a clip. So as you know, if you try and move a clip with stuff attached, it's not gonna work. That attached stuff will try and go with it. So once again, to override those connections, you just hit that Grav key and then you move that clip out of the way. So notice that we have that title over top, we have the sound effect underneath, and then we can move this clip wherever we would like. And remember, if you wanna make a gap clip here, say you don't like this beginning part, you can either press Shift Delete, that's gonna keep everything attached where it is, or if you wanna move the clip and use it later, but you still want that gap clip there, you can press P to bring up the position tool, use that Grav key, and then you can move that so a gap clip will show up with that media still attached. Then you can move this wherever you'd like. If you wanna have that function up all the time, you can hit the Grav key and then hit Shift, and as you notice, my hands are off the keyboard, that orange icon is up, and then you can just hit the Grav key again to disconnect that. Now, if you don't see this key on your keyboard, here is how you set it up. So pull a final cut so you can set this up. I highly suggest doing it. Press Option Command K. This is gonna bring up your custom keyboard shortcut editor. Go to this drop down menu. Likely, if you have, don't have one of these custom keyboards set up, yours is gonna be on default. So what you'll do is hit duplicate. You can just type in example or custom, whatever you would like. And then you're gonna go to the top right search bar and look up override connections. So you'll select that and hit whatever key that you want to be that function. So just as an example, we could press one and then hit reassign, you'll hit save. And then whenever you want to use that feature, that override connections feature, you would just hold down one and then you can drag and move and so on and so forth. That is just an example. You can make that function whatever key you would like. 
You may have noticed that on my timeline I use a lot of stock footage as b-roll to spice up my videos, as well as a lot of overlays, sound effects, and music. These are things that are crucial to making content more engaging, and the sponsor of today's video, Motion Array, helps make sure that you have all of the assets you need when editing your videos. Motion Array is an all-in-one professional platform that offers a huge library of video templates, stock footage, music, sound effects, and more. Need to find clips for your video that show people loving life? Motion Array has got you covered. Need sound effects for that little pop-up that you just added to your video? Easy work. You have tons of options to choose from. How about some animated arrows or circle overlays? You are covered. There's images and plugins you can download as well to help make the videos that you want to make. Motion Array's website is incredibly easy to use, and downloading different assets is as simple as just clicking a button. This takes out the hassle of spending hours scouring the internet to trying to find assets that look good. And the great thing is that Motion Array offers unlimited downloads, so as much as you want with their plans, and this even covers commercial usage. This means that you can experiment with different assets and find the perfect fit for your video without worrying about having to fork out extra cash. There is a link in the description and comments that will get you $50 off your Motion Array plan. They also offer a free trial if you're a little hesitant about purchasing. Thank you again to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. It is awesome to have sponsors like these that help me to keep the lights on in my house, so I am greatly appreciative. Something else that I see often are timelines where you have your main talking head underneath, and I'll just press Control S to suck in this dialogue so it's a little bit cleaner. And then there's a bunch of B-roll shots over top of those talking head clips. And while this isn't necessarily a bad thing, you don't really need this hanging above, and it actually is more useful if it's sucked into the primary storyline. So what I like to do after I find clips that I want to be in certain sections of my video is then I will select the B-roll and hit Option, Command, and Down Arrow. So once again, that's Option, Command, and Down Arrow, and that sucks it into the primary storyline. So if I wanted, I could then go in and use uh, the Trim Tool here. I could press Option with the Trim Tool selected and move this to the left or right. This is very useful if you want to maybe extend out this talking head bit and keep the same duration of this B-roll shot. So then you just slide it across the timeline. Now let's say you don't even want this clip anymore, you want this talking head to extend out. While well, you could press T and go between these two clips and then extend out, you're gonna have part of that clip still left. You'll notice right here that you still have that B-roll shot still there. So what I would do is if you want to extend this out, press Shift Delete like we learned, and then this will allow you to fully snap to the edge of that. The other benefit of pressing Option, Command, and Down Arrow to snap your B-roll into the primary storyline is now we can add transitions from our talking head to our B-roll shots, whereas before, with it above the primary storyline, we could not. So that really comes in handy. Here we have this little Instagram pop-up with my handle on it, and we have sound effects underneath to go with it. This is something else I see people get frustrated with with this software and think they suck at using it. They will try and drag out the beginning of this clip, but notice how this whoosh underneath, which should be right over here, is now moving with this trim adjustment. And the reason it's doing that is because it's connected to the end of this clip, as we can see. So let me press Command Z to undo, and how we can change this connection point is by pressing Option and Command, and then just selecting the clip. So notice how it's snapped to right here. So if we extend this out, it stays exactly where it needs to be. So very useful function once again, that's Option and Command to change that connection point. But for this example, you can use that Grav key function that we went over. So if we hold down that Grav key and just extend this out, it's extending out the clip, but keeping everything that's attached to it uh, in the exact same spot. Nevertheless, that option command to change the clip connection point is still an important function to remember. So people usually suck at using Final Cut because they're not good at using the magnetic timeline and knowing how to disengage it, but there is something else that makes Final Cut such a fantastic editing software, and if you are not utilizing it, then you are missing out. So click this video right here, and I will see you in the next video.